Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 23 of my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. In this video, I'll show you how to use the drag modes. The drag modes affect how regions are treated as you move them around on the timeline or as you make edits on the timeline. Now, the reason why I waited so long to introduce the drag modes is because they interplay heavily with the edit tools and also the grid snap mode and grid snap divisions. So it's important that you already be familiar with Logic's edit tools and editing on the grid before using these drag modes effectively. Now, before we dive into the tutorial, I need to quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Boombox. Unleash your creative potential, store your music, and collaborate with others. Get time-stamped feedback and grow your audience with today's sponsor, Boombox. Boombox has revolutionized collaboration for musicians, artists, producers, and mix engineers worldwide. Boombox is designed specifically for music files, and you can even upload full DAW sessions and keep everything organized and focus on what matters most, making music. You can even manage your projects on the go with their mobile apps for iOS and Android, or upload large files and DAW sessions directly from your desktop with their Sync app for macOS. Create a personalized artist page, find collaborators by genre or location, and you can even mark yourself for hire if you're looking for paid gigs. If you want to check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so there are five drag modes, overlap, no overlap, X fade, which stands for crossfade, shuffle right and shuffle left. For this video, I'm gonna start with X fade because in my opinion, it's the most useful of the five and it's the one I use the most. So what X fade does is it automatically cross fades any overlapping regions. And this can just be two overlapping regions or multiple overlapping regions. You just trim the left or right side of a region to create a crossfade. Likewise, I can go the opposite direction. So if I want to drag these over to the right, I'll get a crossfade over on the right. Likewise, if you use the fade shortcut, which was shift control, you can click and drag on these crossfades to change their shape. And if you hover over the side of the fade while holding shift control, you can click and drag to extend the length of the fade. X fade will also work when you need to add multiple crossfades on the same track. So you can see here, I have a drum track where I've copied and pasted some sections around just to change up the loop. Instead of doing these one at a time, I'm just gonna select all of them. Then I'll zoom in on one of these edit points and I'm just going to trim this forward just a little bit. And that's gonna create a really small crossfade right at that overlap. But what you can see is that same length of crossfade has been added to all of these edit points. And then if I wanted to sort of consolidate those crossfades, I could just press J to join per track. And now I no longer have to look at any crossfades in my edits. Now there is one more edit function I wanna show you here where you can automatically and quickly add crossfades to edit points like this. If you make a selection and then press Control Option X, this will automatically add a crossfade at those edit points. But one thing you're gonna notice here is that the crossfade goes right in the center of the edit point. So I don't have control over where the crossfade goes. So in this situation with drums, this would probably be a bad idea because we're going to be fading right on the transient. Whereas with X fade, you can adjust where that crossfade goes and keep the crossfade off of the transients. You can set the default crossfade length and you can adjust that by going up to Logic Pro settings audio and then from here go to editing. And you'll see a slider here for the default crossfade time or crossfade length. This applies both to the control option X shortcut as well as crossfades that are created during quick swipe comping. And maybe I want this to be something shorter than 20 milliseconds, maybe something like eight milliseconds. Now I can hit control option X again, and it's going to create an eight millisecond crossfade at each of those edit points. Next up, let's check out the no overlap drag mode. So no overlap is used when you don't want regions to overlap. So for example, let's say that I want to take bar three here of this drum loop. I'm gonna go ahead and set my grid snap to bar, and I'm just gonna use the marquee tool to drag over that and click to separate. Now let's say that I wanna take this beat here at bar three and move it up here to bar one. 
Well, with no overlap mode turned on, all you need to do is hold option to duplicate, drag it over up to bar one, and you'll see that there's no overlapping region there. So it, what it does is it moves and replaces and sort of auto trims the other regions around it all at once. If I didn't use no overlap mode, this would require more clicks. I'd have to trim this one up, then move this one over. But with no overlap mode, I can do this all in one movement. So no overlap mode is really helpful even when you want to get in here and be real granular with it. Maybe I want to add an extra kick drum right here. I can make a marquee selection. I don't even need to click on it to separate. I can just hold option and drag this kick drum over. And now I've added an extra kick drum there to my drum beat. Maybe I want to add in another snare drum right here. I can do that as well. And again, I can do that all in one motion rather than having to delete anything or trim anything. Next up, let's check out the overlap drag mode. This one can be a bit misunderstood because at least with audio regions, when you have overlapping regions, you're not going to hear both regions play back at the same time. However, its functionality is different when you're working with MIDI. So for example, if I trim one region over another, like maybe something like this, you can see that when I click on each region that the region boundaries are preserved. But if I deselect everything, you'll see two different sort of markers here. You can see the edge of the region on top, and then you can also see the edge of the region that's sort of been tucked under this region. So this region is overlapping this region by this amount. And again, when you play this back, you're not going to hear both regions at the same time. You're only going to hear the region that's on top. So let's jump over to a MIDI project where I can demonstrate what this is actually useful for. Overlap is really helpful when working with MIDI, especially when you're coming up with MIDI musical ideas on the fly, and maybe you can't play everything all at once on the keyboard, but maybe you can play them one part at a time, and then you want to maybe combine them together later. So here I have four musical ideas. One is a bass line, one are some little staccato chords, I have a melody and a harmony, and they're on four separate tracks. With overlap mode, I could drag all of these onto one track. And what I really have here is four overlapping regions. So unlike with audio regions, with MIDI, all of the regions will play back all at once. However, if you do do this, I highly recommend dragging over those and then pressing J, and that will join all of those MIDI regions together. So it's sort of merging all of those MIDI regions together. So that's overlap mode. That's what I use it most for. Lastly, let's talk about the shuffle right and shuffle left drag modes. In my experience, shuffle editing is most helpful for two things. Reordering regions that are in a sequence that are adjacent to each other or doing shuffle editing on content like voiceover work where the recordings don't need to be right on the grid and you just wanna get rid of gaps in between words and breaths and ums and ahs and pauses and things like that. So I'll demonstrate both of these, but let's start with just the basic functionality. So let's say that on my drum track here, I make a selection with the marquee tool and with shuffle right selected, I'm gonna hit delete. What you'll see is that the content that was at bar one gets moved over to bar two. So it's shuffled the content to the right. Likewise, if I put this on shuffle left and I delete this same section, the content that was at bars three and four has been shuffled over to bar two. What you can also do with this is you can reorder regions in a sequence. To make this easier to see, I'm just going to create four different colors here. And remember, you can bring up your color palette with option C. So I've got four different regions here. If I want to take this region here at bar three and move it up to bar one, look what it does. It pushes the content starting at bar one back over to the right. So when you're doing this sort of re-sequencing and reordering of regions, the shuffle mode that you have selected doesn't really matter so much. 
because we're not actually deleting anything. All we're doing is we're moving things around. Maybe I want the blue one to be here, or maybe I want the green one to be first. So it is helpful for reorganizing regions in a sequence. But if I come in here and I start trimming things or deleting things, you're going to find that things get shuffled around just like so. And then whether you've chosen shuffle right or shuffle left will matter. If you do any sort of voiceover work or narration work where you're just reciting text and you don't necessarily need to edit to the grid like you would with musical content, the shuffle left drag mode will be super helpful to speed up your workflow. So here I have a voiceover. You're going to find there's a lot of gaps and ums and ahs and things like that and mistakes that I make. Um, what I like to do is I work with snap mode off. I'd use shuffle left and then I work with the marquee tool. Check out what you can do with this. So that's the AU. So here I have a gap I already need to get rid of. If I delete that, you'll see that all of the audio gets shuffled over. And so I'm going to do that for every mistake and every weird, awkward pause. Isolation tool in Logic Pro. Try it out on other sound sources. Maybe you have a, a vocal recording that. So I can get rid of that. Uh, hit delete. Maybe you have a vocal recording that was done in a room that was not treated, or maybe you have a podcast a where too many people were talking in the background. Maybe you're doing interviews out in a public space where there's a lot of background noise. The sound isolation plugin is really helpful to the sound isolation. So here's a big mistake. Let me just go ahead and drag over all of that. Bring that in. The sound isolation plugin makes it super quick and easy to cut out that background noise and reverb from your voice recordings. Although I would say, although I would call so there's another mistake. Studio sung vocals, uh, if you can help it, or that's just not good. It's like a good performance, but it's a bad recording. I would typically save this for. There's an awkward pause. But if you have a vocal that really needs to be saved and even if you don't use the plug hundred percent, it's going to sound better with a little bit of the plugin than it is without, especially if you're recording in an untreated space. So since this video is so Okay, so let's just say for sake of demonstration, I don't need anything else. So once you've gone through the entire voiceover and cut out all of the mistakes, just select everything and then use your command option X shortcut to add a crossfade to all of those edit points. And now I have a flawless narration with no mistakes, no awkward pauses, no ums and ahs or loud breaths. So those are the drag modes in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.